Good morning, this is Dr. Ken Long from the Department of Logistics and Resource Operations at Command and General Staff College. Happy New Year. This briefing provides an overview of Forward into Battle, an operational JRS O&I game, Joint Reception, Staging, Onward Movement, and Integration. In this game, the Blue Force player's goal is to move his units efficiently and effectively to their tactical assembly areas while minimizing the Red Force's ability to disrupt and also to set a theater base in a logistics support area to support follow-on operations. The conceptual map consists of a series of seaports where Blue Forces will arrive, then a transportation network featuring nodes and routes that act as staging areas and fuel storage locations for units on the move, uh, and then a set of tactical assembly areas for units as their final destination, and then a log support area where the theater logistician will uh, create the uh, sustainment base for follow-on operations. Opposing them is a Red Force commander, an unseen enemy who has an array of capabilities that he can use to delay and disrupt the Blue Force units and logistics as they move through the transportation network. His goal is to delay and disrupt and to destroy as, many, as much of the Blue Force logistics as possible. The Red Force commander's attacks are uh, the ability to disrupt ports uh, a couple times during the game, inciting riots and so forth. Uh, along the nodes, or in the nodes, and or TAAs, he can use airstrikes, scud missiles, surface-to-air missiles, and conduct raids. Along the routes, he can conduct ambushes and place IEDs or employ chemical uh, munitions. Opposing the Red Force are three blue players, or three blue roles, if you have just a single player. We have the Seaflick Commander, the Combined Force Land Component Commander, whose mission is to use his capabilities to defeat the Red Force and set conditions for Blue Force success. His capabilities essentially mirror and negate the Red Force capabilities. So he can employ air defense artillery, tactical combat forces, he can place chemical teams, EOD teams and combat units in nodes or TAAs to disrupt and defeat these Red Force attacks. He can declare routes as protected or priority routes to help reduce the impact of ambushes. And he also has the ability to uh, employ air assets to move units from node to node without using the land routes and conduct limited aerial resupply for logistics. The ability to make a priority route increases the throughput capability of a particular route between two nodes. So the Seaflick commander sets conditions. The division commander's mission is to move his 38 battalion equivalents from the ports through the network into their tactical assembly areas and prepare them for follow-on operations. The theater sustainment command commander has the mission to move fuel by both ground and air to different nodes. And he does that for two purposes, to support unit moves along the way and to build a theater logistics support area in this assembly area. As a quick reference, uh, this table uh, shows the comparison between Red's portfolio of capabilities and Blue's countermeasures uh, that will reduce the effects and reduce the probability of success. This summarizes the Blue Force players' roles and the Red Force players' roles. Each turn consists of six phases, a disembarkation phase when any units and fuel that are on a ship that is scheduled to arrive in a port will offload, then a ground planning phase by both Red and Blue, a ground action phase where the results of those actions and moves are uh, calculated, an air planning and an air action phase in which the blue force is going to move one unit and fuel and then the red force is going to try to interdict with surface to air missiles. 
and then phase six, a refueling phase, where each Blue Force unit in its current destination consumes a basic load of fuel and then it attempts to be resupplied by either fuel assets in the node or by supporting brigade support battalions. Again, the blue goal is to move efficiently and effectively to their tactical assembly areas while minimizing the Red Force disruption and to set the theater base. Some rules that you will see used in the game. The recon elements, or RISTA, must be the first unit of a brigade into its final tactical assembly area. So brigades, consisting of generally about six different battalions, have to move to a tactical assembly area. Their recon unit must be the first one in in order to clear the route and clear the region. Aviation units can fly into nodes only if there's a maneuver force that is in it or has been in it to clear it. Each unit can move one route or leg per turn, in other words from one node to one other node. The individual routes can support two units per turn unless designated as a priority in which they can support four units. And that's a combination in both directions. So two in one direction or one in each direction for typical routes. In order for a unit to move on a given turn, they have to start with fuel on board. When it's time for the refueling phase, phase six, the units have a refuel priority first, taking their fu fuel from the node, or second from a brigade support battalion or combat sustainment support battalion and third, the unit's own basic load. If they consume their own basic load, they're out of fuel for the next turn until they are resupplied. For the operational logistician, the TSC commander, it takes one transportation point to move one fuel point from one node to the next. Each fuel point represents about a thousand gallons of fuel. The Blue Force can fly one unit per turn from any node to any other node. The Blue Force can also transport a maximum of 400 fuel points from any node to any other node. And that can be 100 fuel to four different nodes uh, or one giant lift of 400 to a single node. The movement of fuel points does not degrade the use of the routes. For victory points, the Red Force is going to get plus points every time they're able to send a Blue Force unit back to its assembly area for reconstitution as a result of a successful attack. If they conduct a, su a successful attack in the face of a Blue Force combat multiplier, they get extra victory points, such as if a route is declared as a protected route with MPs patrolling it, but the Red Force is able to conduct a successful ambush, that counts for double. If they're able to attack or disrupt any route or node, they are uh, awarded points. For every 100 points of Blue Force fuel destroyed, they will get bonuses. And they will only lose points if there's a Red Force attack capability that is destroyed on a given turn by a Blue Force countermeasure. So if an ambush is defeated by MPs that are protecting a route, then the Red Force uh, is docked points. The Blue Force gains points by destroying Red Force combat multipliers, as just described, and by arriving in their assembly areas uh, on a given turn. The sooner they get there, the more points they get for that unit. Otherwise, they can only lose points, such as uh, requiring a Brigade Support Battalion, or CSSB, uh, to provide fuel to a unit because they had not put uh, fuel in a particular node. If you have to use a unit's basic load of fuel to sustain itself, uh, you lose points. If one of your units requires reconstitution as a result of a successful attack, you lose points. And if you're unable to defeat Red Force attacks despite having the capability present to do so, that unsuccessful action uh, causes you to lose points. There is a saved game called Start Loaded, which will help expedite the loading of the ship's process on the on turn zero of the game. Uh, you can either use that one and then adjust it or you can load the division unit by unit with fuel slots. So let's take a look at the at screenshots and how the game looks. So when you first start the game the blue force must first totally load the division across seven different ships and those slots that are not used for units are filled with fuel, 3,000 fuel points each. 
Any ship that's not yet offloaded during the game can have their seaport of debarkation and arrival time adjusted, but once you make your final load plan and click the X, uh, then you're locked into that load on the ship. You can delay or divert that ship uh, during the game uh, until such time as they're loaded. If you load that game called Start Loaded, you get this array, which shows as an example the division headquarters and the first brigade, the headquarters, the recon unit, two maneuver battalions, a field artillery battalion, and a brigade support battalion, plus 3,000 points of fuel, all loaded on ship number one, the Cape Fear, which is scheduled to arrive in seaport of debarkation Alpha on the first turn, and so on. Now you'll see there's about 38 different uh, divisional units or battalion sized equivalents, uh, and then the remaining slots are taken up by fuel points. And these are the three seaports that are in effect. Uh, the road and node transportation network is hidden behind this uh, chart. Once you finish loading the division then, when you're satisfied, you click that X, uh, and then the game proceeds into disembarkation phase. The map board itself consists of a series of uh, three ports, A, B, and C. Uh, a set of nodes labeled you know, D through Victor, each one of which uh, is exactly one turn's move away from the previous um, or adjacent nodes. Uh, then you have uh, special assembly areas and tactical assembly areas. Uh, assembly area R, or Romeo, uh, is where the divisional base has to set up, and it's also the log support area where the theater logistician has to stockpile fuel to support follow-on operations. The maneuver brigades and aviation brigade uh, basically are arrayed against tactical assembly areas S, T, U, and V. The routes are these connecting black lines between the nodes. The number two in each case represents that a normal route can handle the movement of up to two units per turn, two in one direction or one in each direction. What we can see on uh, S-Pod uh, Charlie here is that it has seven blue units indicated by the seven and is currently storing 3,000 fuel points. We'll contrast that with assembly area F, which has no blue units and no fuel staged at this time. So after turn one, uh, we have seven units and 3,000 fuel points in A, six and 6,000 in B, seven and 3,000 in C. The first thing that we might do in the ground planning phase then uh, is to select a route. And uh, we've selected this route from A to G. Uh, and we can designate that as a priority or protected route by clicking in this pop-up window. And blue right now has the ability of designating two priority and three protected routes. A priority route allows you to increase the capability of unit movement to four. A protected route will reduce the probability uh, that ambushes are successful and will minimize the damage that they can do. There's also a possibility that those MPs protecting the route can destroy the ambush capability and gain points for blue. In the tug of war between red and blue, the victory points would be indicated in this area. And this section of the map will show you uh, who's playing the turn and the phase that we're in. In the action reports, there is a listing of information messages as tasks are completed. You can expand that to show a more extensive list. When we're done with our particular planning, we're going we're to click the next phase button. And up until that point, we can adjust our movement plan and our asset allocation plan. Early in the game, we have a limited number of priority routes and protected routes and transportation points. And as we move through the game and more capabilities are brought into the theater, uh, the numbers uh, will expand. When I click on the Asset Manager, uh, I have the ability now to array some of those Blue Force capabilities. Right now I've selected Assembly Area D, uh, and you can see that because it's highlighted in blue. And the assets that I have available to allocate is the C-Flick Commander indicated here. I have two Air Defense Artillery teams, an NBC team, an EOD team, and a tactical combat force. By selecting uh, the radio button, I can uh, assign one of those or more of those teams against each node. 
<clears throat> now I've selected S-Pod Alpha and as you can see there are seven blue units and 3,000 fuel points located here. I've now among the divisional movement units then I've uh, selected the division headquarters here. You can see the division headquarters in his icon. His final assembly area is Romeo or R so I'm going to have to move him do, during this game from A to R by s some means in order to uh, get him into his final destination. He has a unit basic load of five fuel points that he consumes every turn and he currently has five fuel points uh, on, uh, on hand. <clears throat> By clicking this route marker and then right mouse clicking on a destination I can turn um, I can provide a movement order uh, to the division headquarters. Right now he could move along a route to either G, D, E, or B along one of those particular routes. And he would count as one of the two units uh, that could be supported by routine moves. Now I've selected uh, S-Pod Alpha and I clicked on the fuel uh, label in the menu bar and now I have a, uh, a layout of my complete fuel posture for all nodes. I have 3,000 in Alpha, 6,000 in Bravo, and 3,000 in Charlie. If I scroll down I can see all the way out to Victor. In this example I have selected S-Pod Alpha and I've clicked on Convoys. Now to create a fuel convoy I click on the fuel truck and then I type in uh, a window will come up and I'm going to type in the number of fuel points in this case I selected 1000 and then I've route right mouse clicked assembly area Delta as the target for my fuel convoy and then the fuel convoy is established and he's noted in here uh, convoy 1 with a thousand fuel points to assembly area D. <coughs> that convoy will decrement the transportation points that I have available by 1000 leaving me 1500 of my original 2500 left to allocate. So on the first turn I have 2500 transportation points and that tells me I could move up to 2500 fuel points. The convoy then is, put, is postured on the route, but it does not count against unit movement limits on the routes. <coughs> After creating that convoy, C1, to carry the thousand fuel points from A to D, if I then go back and click on the fuel uh, menu command, uh, you'll see that the fuel report has been updated to reflect a thousand fuel points being moved from the storage in Alpha to this convoy and then with a destination. At this point in the turn if I call up the deployment planning <coughs> uh, window you can see that uh, my first three ships have been offloaded and um, I would have the ability to change the location uh, of each of these ships and the turn on which I want them to arrive however I could not cross level between uh, ships at this point. Uh, each ship can completely offload uh, each turn and they will do so automatically. After blue and red have uh, locked in their their ground planning phase uh, and, we, and both have hit next phase then uh, movement and combat results are applied uh, in this case you can see that there's uh, a uh, the red has emplaced an IED along route AD and put uh, persistent chemical along route CE um, and then we move into uh, air planning phase. In the air planning phase the blue can move uh, one unit from any node to any other node and up to a total of 400 fuel points from any combination of nodes to any other combination of nodes. It's a good way to offset successful red attacks and it may leave a node uh, with uh, if there is a successful red attack that might have decremented fuel in a node and would otherwise have a shortfall you might use aerial resupply in order to build stockages forward. And what we've done here is uh, Blue has planned to send 200 fuel points each to assembly area E and assembly area India from S-Pod Alpha. So A1 is going 
going to fly to E and then uh, going to fly 200 to, uh, to I. And that's built in the same way as ground convoys by clicking the, uh, the Chinook icon and typing in the number of fuel points to move and then right mouse clicking the destination. Now in, in this portion of the air planning phase, uh, I've clicked on air movement and I have selected uh, the first recon element uh, to move uh, to assembly area Lima um, by uh, selecting them and then right mouse clicking the destination. Now both fuel convoys, uh, the aerial uh, resupply convoys and the uh, unit movement convoy uh, will arrive in their in their destination node unless uh, Red has placed a surface to air missile, one of his capabilities in there, and and then that SAM missile uh, has a successful attack against the uh, uh, the air movement unit. By selecting uh, Victory Conditions Report from the Commands menu that's off the screen, but it would be at the top of your uh, screen, um, you will get a detailed display of this tug of war victory point status uh, between blue and, and red. And you, you would see the contributions that each of these uh, categories makes towards the overall uh, victory status. Um, so that's, that's a quick look at, uh, at what the screens look like and uh, the basic flow of the game. There's also a video provided that has an example turn showing live clicks with voiceover. So thanks for your kind attention. Enjoy the game.